Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a USB BAS flashback on our Gigabyte X570i AC Wi Fi Aorus Pro. I think that's what it's called. It'll be right in the description anyway. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the USB BAS flashback option for the Gigabyte Aorus Pro Wi-Fi X570i Mini ITX motherboard. Now this is pretty much the same across, in fact, most of the range, but I do like to do these for each individual board. There's some people do need a bit of extra hand-holding for their specific type and obviously for downloading files, etc. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Things you're gonna need is ideally, obviously the motherboard on some sort of open test bench. In this particular instance, you can probably see we've got it uh, basically fully assembled. So the reason I'm doing this is because the motherboard actually had basically one of the first BARS releases, I think it was F3, and uh, we want to install Windows 11, so we need to enable things like TPM, secure boot, etc., etc. And also, it's always worth having the latest BARS on your system before you start installing Windows. And at the moment, we basically can't install Windows 11 because it just won't do it. It isn't supported. So we do need to do a USB BOS flashback. You can, of course, if you want to, if the system is working, you can go into the BOS and just upload it from there. That is pretty much the easiest way if your system is working and will post. But if it isn't, then this is the way to do it. So you're gonna need a obviously power supply to power the motherboard. Don't need anything else on it. No RAM, no CPU, but like I said, on ours, it's fully assembled. So potentially you might wanna remove RAM sticks or just remove any bootable devices potentially, but should be absolutely fine. Something you will need is a USB drive. Now it has to be under 32 gigabytes, so it can support the FAT32 file system. Ideally, obviously a blank drive, because you are gonna to have to format it and erase it. And yeah, basically that is pretty much it. If you've got a larger drive, there is a method you can use to actually create a smaller FAT32 partition on your drive, but it doesn't always work out. So if you're experiencing any problems, then the safest and easiest way is just to get a smaller drive to begin with. Always handy to have. I'll put some links in the video description for uh, this Sandisk one, which we always use, and some other options in various countries. So you can have one on standby should you need one. So I think that is pretty much it for the uh, intro. Let's download the USB flash file, put it onto the drive, and we'll go through all that, and then we'll come back, do the boss flash, and uh, yeah, hopefully this should help you immensely. Okay, so we're on to our Windows desktop. So let's put in our USB flash drive. And there is a boss on there, so I'm not sure. That, actually, that might be the one I need, but whatever. We'll delete it anyway. And what we want to do is ideally format the drive, or at least make sure it's in the right format. So if you right-click on it and choose Format, and you see there it's less than 32 gigabytes. It's currently in the FAT32 system, so if yours is on XFAT, it won't work. It does have to be FAT32. And your allocation size, you can choose default. If there's anything in the volume label, I would strongly suggest removing it. So if it's got like, um, I don't know, SanDisk or something, just uh, get rid of that and choose quick format. Click on start and it'll say it's gonna erase all data. So obviously if there's any information you need on there, quickly drag it onto your desktop or something or move it onto another stick. When you're happy, click okay. And there we go, our format is complete. So that's the drive ready. So what we wanna do now is to actually download the BIOS. Now, I've already got the page here ready, so this is for this particular board. So it's the X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi revision 1.0. There was only one revision of this board, so uh, don't be too concerned about the revision, etc. And head over to the support tab, which is over here. And on this page here, you can find out other things should you need to, such as CPU support. So you can find out which version of the BOSS you actually need for your specific processor. Although realistically, I would suggest with BOSS updates, generally you want to go for the very latest one or the newest version because of the security fixes, etc., etc. So scroll down until you find this section here, which is BIOS, of which there are 16 BIOS versions available. So as you can see, that is the version that we've got currently, version F3, which is the original release back from uh, 2019, all that way back. And there's been many, many updates. So the one we want to try and use is the uh, the very newest one, or at least, say for instance, this one here. That one is the first one to actually support Windows 11, the uh, addressing the basic Windows 11 requirements. So if you're having problems installing Windows 11, make sure F35 is the very minimum you go for. But we're going to go on a little bit further. So we've got F37B, which I'm guessing is a beta. 
but this is for the new uh, Agisa V2 1.2.08 which actually addresses some issues with a vulnerability within the platform. So we're going to get this one, so click on download and save it somewhere nice and easy to get to. So we're going to save it to the desktop. And now we can close this window or minimize it at least whilst it's still downloading and look for it on your desktop. So there is the boss there. So we can right click on this one, choose extract all, click extract. So what we're gonna to wanna to do next is to rename the file. At the moment it's a 37B file, which is uh, okay if you're just flashing the BAS from within the BAS itself, but if you're doing it from the USB method, uh, from a non-booting system, because you need CPU support, you need to rename this file. Uh, if you can't see the file extensions, you can uh, go over to your settings and uh, your options here, and you can choose to view and basically show hidden files, folders, drives, and also um, you can choose that one and hide extension for known file types. So you can choose to have that either on or off. Obviously, if you can't see your uh, file extension there, you will need to do this. So we need to rename it. So in order to do that, just click on it twice and highlight everything. And then you can delete that. And we want to rename the file to gigabyte.bin. That's B-I-N. Very important that you do that. Doesn't matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. And make sure there has been some people that have done gigabyte, but they've done the B-I-T-E rather than B-Y-T-E uh, because they've listened to the instructions. So yeah, definitely make sure uh, you type that in correctly. Once you're happy, click enter. You'll get a warning saying if you change the file name extension, the file might become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes, we definitely are. And there we go. So that is our file now called gigabyte.bin. So we can right click this now and choose copy. And then we can go into our USB drive, which we pre-formatted, right click and choose paste. You can use uh, the control buttons if you wish to. And that is it. So now we can eject that drive and head over to the PC and actually start the flashing process. So now we've got our USB drive pre-formatted with our gigabyte.bin file on. We are ready to do the BAS flash. So I've connected up the power supply on this particular unit and we need to plug this into the specific USB flashback port on the back of the motherboard. Now on this particular version, you'll see there is the BAS flashback button and just adjacent to that is a white colored USB port. So that is gonna be your USB BAS flashback port. So insert your drive into the marked port. Now I should also mention, I have actually physically removed the RAM from the computer just in case it tries to actually boot the system. Obviously not having any RAM is gonna prevent that from happening. So uh, potentially if you can get access to your RAM easily, if you have a fully built system, obviously remove it. If you have a, just a bare motherboard, then obviously ignore that advice because you don't have anything on there. So that is uh, pretty much it, we're all ready. Make sure the power supply is switched on, which I believe it is. Yes, power supply is switched on. And all we need to do is to press and hold the BAS flashback button for about the count of three seconds. And then we're waiting for any signs of movement on the motherboard or the flashing LED on the back of the, uh, the BAS plate there. So one, two, three. And after a few seconds of waiting, uh, the system has kind of uh, fired up. The fans are spinning on this now. Uh, obviously, if you've got a bare system, yours won't, but we do have some illumination there. So hopefully, if I spin that around very slightly, you can see the LED is flashing there. So this whole process now should take somewhere in the region of about five minutes to uh, go through entirely. You may see the light actually go solid. If it does go solid and it's not doing anything, then it means it either can't read the file or it cannot read your USB drive, in which case uh, go back a couple of steps, maybe try a different USB drive, and potentially if you have a USB drive which doesn't fully support the MBR format, which is something else we covered in a separate video. So there's a GPT format and also a MBR. MBR is the older version, GPT is the newer version for UEFI. So if uh, for some reason yours just flashes for ages and doesn't seem to do anything or goes solid, or does like three flashes then stops, that is because the system cannot read the file or cannot read the drive itself. So I'll link that video in the video description below as well. So if you wanna check that out, if you're getting problems, please feel free to do so. But other than that, I would say just leave this uh, doing its own thing. You'll get to the end and it will turn itself off. So I'm gonna fast forward through that for you guys, but I'm gonna to have to wait. So uh, we'll come back shortly. 
Okay, so you can see the uh, light has turned off there. So that means the uh, flashing process should be completed now. Okay, so at this point, you're probably thinking to yourself, if you've got a built system, um, the lights stop flashing, but the system's still on, what should I do? Now this is something which is never taught in any of the user manuals because they're not expecting this to be the case. But realistically, if the flashing LED at the back here has completely stopped and has extinguished itself, you are safe to turn the computer off. Now you can do that in multiple ways. Obviously, if you've got your power button connected, just press and hold that one. Alternatively, you can just turn off the uh, power to your power supply, which I'm going to do there. So system is now powered down. We can now remove USB drive and it's basically done. Now, obviously, if for some reason yours hasn't flashed, then that is the beauty of the USB flashback BIOS. What you can do is just go through the process again, stick it in, press the button and get it to flash again. The whole point of a USB BIOS flashback is a to update the system but also to recover the system. So if your BIOS gets compromised or corrupted or you flash it and there's some sort of outage, etc., the whole point is you can just keep on trying to reflash it and the actual system which controls that is a separate entity. So you've got the BIOS and then you've also got the BIOS flashback section which is on a separate chip. So as long as that is still functioning and there's not been any electrical damage to it, you should still be able to recover your BIOSes. So anyway, there you go. Hopefully this video has been useful to you and you've got some information there and possibly put your mind at ease a little bit if you're perhaps attempting this for yourself for possibly the first time. For those of you that are seasoned veterans, then uh, it's probably always worth having someone else who's done it numerous times just to go over it with you anyway. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, hit subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything and you get to see my smiling face every day in your inbox. I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.